Hello everybody, Scott Golden here with AEW Dark for the 8th of December 2020. And, um, I mean, nothing major happened on the program, but that, at the same time, it was better than Raw in the sense that at least there are talent there with an upside that haven't already been killed to the point where most people don't care about them anymore. Anyway, Anthony Agogo, Excalibur, and Taz. One of them is a professional and two amateurs, at least in my opinion. And I officially, I have to listen to Dark with the mute button on. Otherwise, I can't get through the show. Anyway, I think there's 13 or 14 matches in this show. Um, most of them are squashes that don't really matter in the long run. Anyway, Sunny Kiss with Joey Janela defeat Baron Black. If they would just fire Joey Janela, let Kiss go on his own, this would be so much better. Kiss shows speed early and some flexibility. Uh, Black finally catches him with a backstabber. Black goes for a suplex. Kiss gets a cradle for near fall. And Kiss hits some drop kicks and a diving Rana. And uh, goes he goes for the he goes to the top rope. Black cuts him off and goes for a power bomb. Rolls through it and hits another Rana and lands the split leg drop for the win. Sunny Kiss has such an upside, and if they were promoting him properly. Telling a backstory with him, it'd be really exciting. Uh, Brian Cage defeats Danny Limelight. Uh, Brian Cage looks like a million bucks. Limelight sells like a million bucks, so this is a good combination. Uh, Cage shrugs off a dropkick early, and Limelight uh, hits a forearm and hits a springboard Rana. And then Cage takes control, beats him down with, with quite a number of power moves. Um, Limelight gets out of Weapon to X and hit a kick. Cage nails him with a clothesline. Limelight walks the ropes to avoid getting trapped in the corner. Hits a destroyer. Cage pops up and hits a power bomb, a buckle bomb, and a drill claw to end it. Limelight, who I first saw with the, um, primetime pay-per-views that have been suspended till next year, um... Looks like a million, like, this kid's got a lot of upside. I hope they sign him. I'd actually be in favor of them letting some people go and signing him instead. He's got a major upside, and he's got something going. Anyway, Nyla Rose and Vicky Guerrero defeats uh, Alex Garcia. Nothing against Vicky Guerrero, but I still don't understand her point here. Nyla Rose, I haven't understood the point from day one. Um, this is her first match since losing at full gear. Uh, squash match. Garcia tries to hit some... Uh, weak-looking strikes, and, uh, Rose hits her with a shoulder tackle. Garcia gets a comeback, and, um, and Rose stays on her for quite a bit, and hits a beast bomb for the win. Guerrero does the excuse me crowd bit, and she calls herself intelligent for attacking Brandy Rose, demands that the audience applaud for Rose, and, um... Uh, then she walks away. These uh, waiting room segments with Britt Baker, I do not like. Um, she addresses Kenny Omega and Sting as Rebel laughs at her. And she brings up Thunder Rosa, accusing her of needing security to avoid a fight. Dustin Rhodes comes out. He's, he's in a suit with half his face painted. Um, Dust, they promote the Dusty and Cody action figures. Baker asks why, uh, Cody got paid so much more than Dustin. Dustin said, uh, he may, he pays more than in taxes than, than Baker made in total. Uh, he then asks if her boyfriend won match of the year, which Cody and Dustin won, which is kind of funny. Um... Baker said she senses darkness coming from Dustin. Um, he said the end of the world is coming and that he would take out every member of the start of the Dark Order, starting with Preston, 10, Vance, tomorrow. Marco Stunt plays guitar and sang, um, I couldn't place. This was pointless. Um, Dustin's promo was good. I don't necessarily understand why they're waiting him, um, why they're wasting him in this way. 
Anyway, Preston 10 Vance with Allen 5 Angels defeats Aaron Solo. Uh, the majority of Dark Order's out for this. Five sticks around. Uh, Solo gets overpowered early. Solo hits a drop kick and tries to go power for power. That doesn't pay off. Solo hits a spine buster. I'm sorry, Vance hits a spine buster. Then hits the, the, the pose. And then Solo makes a comeback after avoiding a kick in the corner. Uh, and then uh, some wheelbarrow suplexes. Ten hits a ripcord lariat to the back of uh, Solo's head for the finish. This was a complete throwaway. Peter Avalon, Louis Vale, also a complete throwaway. Um, they trade offense early. Av uh, Avalon cuts Vale off with a kick and landed some strikes. Vale makes a comeback, hits a driving, diving drop kick, um, but Avalon catches him with a Samoan drop. Uh, and then a series of knees follow for a pin. Avalon issues an open challenge with the caveat that they had to be well-groomed. He called it Pretty Peter's pageant provocation. This is just stupid. They could get rid of this character entirely and no one would care. The Gun Club, Billy Gunn, Austin Gunn, Colton Gunn defeat Sean Dean, Sean Luda, and Ryzen. Gun Club enters um, with a golf cart that says Taz Taxi. This was funny. Uh, Colton and Dean start off Billy and, and, uh, and Austin help him to, uh, hold, cut the ring off. Colton does a series of strikes and then kind of makes like he's making a slam dunk. Austin tags in, hits Maluda with a clothesline for near fall. Maluda goes back to a Samoan drop. Austin uses the ropes and Ryzen lays him out on the outside Austin and Dean hit double clotheslines. Billy gets the hot tag. Billy um, is doing well until Ryzen avoids the Famouser. And then Ryzen hits a thrust kick on Billy. Billy rolls out of the way of Ryzen's moonsault. Hits a Famouser to win. Completely unnecessary match. As is the next one. Red Velvet defeats Danny Jordan. I love Danny Jordan. Red Velvet I see nothing in. Velvet gets an advantage early, di driving Jordan's face into the turnbuckle. Jordan escapes, gets a cradle, they trade kicks. Jordan hits a hanging rope DDT. Jordan makes fun of her with the burn book gimmick. Velvet fires back, hits some kicks on her own, hits a bulldog, and a standing moonsault for near fall. And then finally hits a running drop kick to get the three. This doesn't advance anybody, and it just takes up time. The show's running between two and three hours a week now. is dark, and it just doesn't make sense. Um, Jurassic Express, Lucha uh, Source, and Marco stunt with Jungle Boy. Why is Marco in the ring and Jungle Boy is on the outside? That makes no sense. Um, against Falco and Mike Magnum. Falcom and Magna make their debuts here. Uh, Stunt makes fun of them, does some lucha, and Fal uh, Falco hit them with a DDT. Magnum tags in, gets hit with quite a few strikes from Luchasaurus, and uh, Stunt hits a couple of sentons. They continue the attack, and Stunt attacks Fallo on the apron, but gets uh, hit with a clothesline. From Magnum, who is the legal man. Stunt escapes into a Luchasaurus tag. Luchasaurus beats down everybody. Hits a reverse Death Valley driver on Falco. And Magnum breaks up a pin. Stunt tags in. Magnum gets kicked in the face. And uh, Falco takes a choke slam from Luchasaurus. Um, and Stunt gets the pinfall as a follow-up. Brandon Cutler defeats uh, Fuego Del Sol. Not a match that needs to be here either. I, I, I really feel like if they cut Dark in half and only put the good talent in there against each other, the talent that has a chance of going somewhere, this could be a show that is can't miss. Now it's 
barely can watch if I didn't support the fact that this is the emerging company that's eventually going to be at least on par with WWE full time, in my opinion. Uh, both dispatched decent athleticism. Um, Cutler um, gets sent to the outside. Cutler avoids a dive and lands a dive of his own. Cutler hits a uh, allows Del Sol to hit the springboard sp- a splash and a cradle for a near fall. Cutler hits the LDL for two. Uh, Sol fires back and Cutler hits diving forearms. Del Sol fights out of TPK and hits a moonsault and some offense. And uh, there's a sliced bread here. Um, he ends up using the crossroads. Cutler catches the DDT attempt and hits the TPK for the win. This is his sixth straight win. Okay, so he loses, he loses, he loses, and he loses, and then he goes on a streak. What happened? You haven't interviewed him in a way that would make anybody care why he's winning now, and that's just stupid. Eva Lee and Skylar Moore. Uh, Moore gets a few near falls early. Eva Lee hits a curve stomp into the buckle for a near fall. Moore gets another near fall. Uh, Eva Lee locks on a sleeper, and then Moore uses a jawbreaker to get out of it. Moore hits a pow- falling power slam for a two count. And catches Ivelisse. Ivelisse transitions this into an octopus hold and gets a submission victory. This is fine, but again, not terribly necessary. Um, by this point, the show is really starting to feel somewhat long. Big Swole defeats Lindsay Snow. Swole is the, is, uh, Swole is the number one contender for uh, the Women's Championship. And then... They do some chain, chain wrestling at the bell. Lindsay Snow does have an MMA-style background. She's done a little bit of that, uh, so she can hang. Swole fights out, lands an axe kick, and she fights out of a bear hug as well. Um, Snow's cut off by a back elbow. She fights back with a lariat. She follows that up with a face wash in the corner. Swole applies for a cradle and... Uh, gets a gets hit with a knee. She tries to lock on a crucifix cradle, but her feet are under the ropes. Uh, she gets a three count after moving her feet into proper position. Uh, hybrid two defeat VSK and Saritha Chun. Um, TH two has a match with the Young Bucks on Wednesday. VSK hits some kicks early. Chun takes control with some suplexes. And everybody goes for dives, but they're cut off. TH2 hits a series of double team moves. And then includes the uh, standing 450. Evans stops the officials count uh, and does the Young Bucks flexing pose. Evans takes out VSK with a dive, and Helico locked on the Navarro death roll for submission victory. Uh, Diamante defeats uh, Tesha Price. Um, Chain wrestling early. Price follows up with a lariat. She goes for cartwheel kick. Dynamite catches her and lands a German suplex. Dynamite stays on the offense hitting a dropkick in the corner, and then slowing the match down. Uh, She hits running knees and Bulldog for two, does um, Price, and then Dynamite comes back with a sliced bread for another near fall of her own. Price tries a cradle. Dynamite kicks out, hits the code red for the three count. Alex Marvez, uh, why are you employed? Um, Interviews hybrid two. Evans calls the win a massacre and says they can beat the Young Bucks and they'll become the champions eventually. Shayna, who's one of my favorite uh, women there, um, against Freda States. Uh, This is States' first AEW match, and she's about six feet. She goes for chokeslam. Shayna fights out and hits a neckbreaker. States gets Shayna with uh, several power moves. Shayna escapes. A submission and and does hit and run strikes. States catches her again. States 
Sets up Shayna for a tree of woe. Shayna avoids it, hits a cannonball, and hits several kicks and a stunner. States powers out of the Tiger Suplex. Shayna hits a tilt world DDT and a running drop kick. And a Tiger Suplex for the win. Shayna with her second win in a row. The acclaimed of Bowens and Caster defeat Michael Nakazawa and John Cruz. Poor John Cruz. Why is he being wasted in this particular role? Uh, Caster makes fun of the opponents rapping during their entrance. Bowens takes the mic and said the acclaimed have arrived. Nakazawa um, uses oil early and nearly gets a win with a slipping senton. Bowens cuts off Cruz with a face buster. Uh, acclaimed stay on Cruz for quite a number of minutes using double teams after a beat down. Cruz escapes a suplex and hit a bulldog and gets the hot tag to Nakazawa. Words I never thought I would say in that order. Acclaimed avoids clotheslines from Nakazawa. Nakazawa uh, gets rid of Caster and hits Bowens with a spear for a two count. Nakazawa goes to do the underwear deal, but Bowens levies him with a forearm. Acclaim sent Cruz um, to the loser's window for uh, with the Acclaim to fame. Then your main event of the episode or your last match, depending on your idea. Uh, Varsity Blondes, Griff Garrison, Byron Pillman Jr. against Dark Order, Colt Cabana, and Alex Reynolds. Blondes face FTR on Dynamite today. Garrison and Reynolds start off, and Garrison takes control with the advantage. Cabana tries to get involved. Blondes uh, maintain their control and the numbers advantage. Um, Dark Order back in the ring and some hip tosses. And some strike attacks. Pillman goes for springboard. Cabana takes him out, allowing the Dark Order to take advantage. Dark Order maintains controls and um, keeps the illegal man in on a regular basis. Pillman finally escapes, and Garrison gets the hot tag. Garrison goes nuts on the opponent, continuing the attack in the corner on Cabana. Uh, Reynolds breaks up a pin attempt on Cabana. Reynolds hits a discus forearm for near fall. Garrison almost gets a win with a jackknife cover. Uh, the Blondes then, then hit a doomsday blockbuster. Gets their first victory over a more established team. Uh, then we go to another Dustin Rhodes interview with Dasha about his upcoming match with 10. He said there's a history between the Dark Order and the Nightmare family. and He hasn't forgotten he will go to the ends of the earth to destroy every member of the Dark Order. Blondes are interviewed by Alex Marvez. And Pillman said that AEW has the best tag roster in the world today. And even though they're inexperienced, the Blondes make up for it with athleticism and good genetics. So, that closes... Um, AEW Dark, I would still say in terms of a wrestling program, it was better than Raw. Anyway, um, I will be back with more right after this.